Yeah, I was just reflecting a bit about coming across this training as well, and for me it was like about 11 years ago. And uh, I, I wasn't, I didn't think I was, it's really funny actually, I didn't think I was looking for anything. And yet actually, I also thought I was on this kind of spiritual search doesn't really go together at all now I think about it and I came to um, kind of stumbled across the training and came to these open meetings and um, th there was lots of things I didn't like about the open meetings it pushed lots of buttons for me um, but there was things that I heard in in the in the training and the, the, the trainers were sharing that just just fascinated me and um, and despite all of the resistance that I had I, I was intrigued by, by what I heard, and so I, I, I came back and, um, and I, I got some talks to listen to, and there's lots of talks you can get at the back from the media table, or free talks to listen to, and I took these talks away and started listening to them, and um, I'd never really, I'd never heard anything quite like it. I'd, I'd spent years reading books about the nature of reality and trying to understand and having you know, like all of us, I'd, I'd had glimpses of the nature of reality. I'd recognised, um, you know, the inseparability of everything. I'd had these moments of incredible clarity and bliss and, you know, just the, 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 the recognition of the, of the oneness of everything. But there'd been these sort of, sort of fleeting experiences <coughs> that I'd never been able to hold on to or to integrate into my everyday life when I was back home shopping or you know, having an argument with my family again, or, you know, that life just always seemed to, despite having these moments of clarity and of recognition of complete openness, that the struggle seemed to continue. And so I, I started listening to some of the talks from um, Balanced View, and slowly it, it dawned on me that actually what I was looking for um, it wasn't just me that was looking for it. I wasn't the only person that wanted to understand the nature of reality, the nature of mind, the nature of identity, that wanted to know what, what's going on, what is all of this, what am I meant to be doing here? Um, and that was kind of interesting, and to discover that really there have been people really looking into this in incredible depth for thousands of years. And for thousands of years working out what is actually going to allow people to recognize this? Like, what works? What are the kind of practices and approaches that are necessary to allow someone to recognize the nature of reality? And the reason that this occurred to me was that because listening to these talks, I would hear things like, um, I think the one that really struck me was like, all thoughts and emotions and sensations appear like a rainbow in space and self-resolve naturally, self-release naturally. And it was just so simple and it was so clear and it was the exact description and explanation of my own experience. And I could immediately relate and that's what's going on. Like everything I'm experiencing is like this rainbow appearing in space. You know, I can see it really vividly but there's nothing I can hold on to. There's no way I can hold on to any experience. And then I'd hear other suggestions like, well, for a short moment, just rest your mind and body naturally and allow everything to be as it is. And the short moment bit of it was the bit that really got me. That was the bit I really liked because my mind was so active, you know, so busy. There was so much going on. And, um, just for a short moment, just to rest it naturally, just to stop following after these endless descriptions, to stop trying to do anything with what was occurring and to allow it to be as it was. And I thought, just, just for a short moment, an instant, I can do that. And, and I tested it out. I would take these short moments whenever I naturally remembered. And, and it was incredible. There was a recognition of the actual nature of my mind as being completely vast and wide open like a clear sky. Like just for an instant. And then I'd collapse back into the descriptions about what I didn't like about 
the haircut of the person sitting two rows in front of me or you know or, or something that somebody had said 20 years ago and sort of that would pop into my mind and I'd be off thinking about that again and and again I'd have that suggestion from listening to the talk or coming to the open meeting why don't you repeat the short moment just for an instant allow your mind just to think whatever it's thinking allow yourself to feel whatever you're feeling allow your senses to sense whatever they're sensing and recognize open intelligence as the basis and naturally present in and as whatever you're thinking feeling or sensing in the data that are appearing within open intelligence and I repeated these short moments and it was incredible because I could recognize for myself instinctively and directly the actual nature of reality there was this vast open intelligence what was looking through my eyes what was hearing everything I was hearing seeing everything I was seeing sensing everything I was sensing and it was always there it never went away all that happened was that my attention collapsed back down into the descriptions into the content of the mind into the data and I simply forgot about this vast essence this vast basic state that was always there and was inseparable from whatever I was thinking feeling or sensing in the same way that um, the breeze is inseparable from the air or the color blue is inseparable from the sky and this was amazing for me and I began to see that really what was on offer here was a systematic teaching and approach that would allow me to settle deeper and deeper into this instinctive recognition I could train up my capacity to recognize the nature of reality regardless of circumstances and I saw this for myself through repeating these short moments and I tested it out in all kinds of circumstances just in my daily activity and whenever I checked whenever I stopped describing I rested naturally just for a short moment there it was there with this vastness of mind was there this perceptual openness and it never went anywhere and I could slowly learn how to bring my attention and recognition of this into my everyday experience so this was like this um, these peak experiences that happened a couple of times a year that were the most incredible things in my life I was learning how to integrate this into my everyday experience this is what an authentic teaching does it shows you how you can train up in the instinctive recognition of the power of your mind to be of benefit to all and it starts with yourself so the first benefit I saw was that actually I could give myself a break from this incessant commentary on my own life and that incessant commentary for myself was almost always overwhelmingly negative like what I'm doing wrong what I should have said why people don't like me why I'm an idiot and I the commentary was the justification of those thoughts and it was really convincing and so for a short moment I could just stop that and allow my mind just to rest naturally and it was such a relief it was just such a relief I didn't have to go there I was seeing I had a choice in every moment of how I'm going to use my mind am I going to victimize myself and behave as if I'm a victim to all of these fleeting appearances all of these rainbow like appearances giving them this um, or trying to give them this substantiality that they just simply do not have or am I going to rest naturally and see that these same appearances are actually my power to be of great benefit when I allow them to be as they are then they inform this spontaneous wisdom so as soon as I take up any fixed position I'm limiting this spontaneous um, capacity to be of benefit and your question is a great example and the one of the powers of the training is that we get to see with increasing clarity the sometimes subtle sometimes not so subtle fixed ideas that we've adopted and we believe to be true and um, and so that example is great when um, my children are behaving in this way then I always need to behave and respond in this way as a as a way of dealing with it and, and your limitation is, is immediate there 
Whereas actually when that thought comes up, when you feel everything in that situation, if you allow your mind to rest naturally, you have an immediate opening of perspective. And all options are open to you. And options that from having a fixed perspective, just you just don't see. You've already collapsed into, a, into one point of view. Rather than allowing this vast, spontaneous, spontaneous wisdom to be accessible. And this is the nature of our mind. And it might be very different from what you'd heard. When I first came to an open meeting, I'd never heard anything like that. That actually, you are a exalted being that has access to this sublime wisdom. I heard something like that in the first open meeting and sort of laughed to myself. It's like, what do you mean? You know, I'm an idiot, I'm a failure, I'm stupid, I'm unstable, I feel this and that, and I'm a victim to all of these um, experiences. And the, the, the question about the um, support is it's so good. Because to be supported by people and by a trainer and by a teaching that doesn't take you to be a victim of your own experience, of your own data, I found that really difficult. <laughs> like really challenging. Because it's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I, I really am a victim. This really is bad. This is really hard for me. This is really challenging. This has to do with all of this past history and my personality and my upbringing. And you, you just don't understand. I really am a victim. And, and the support I was getting back was, no, you're not. No, 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 I am, I am, I am. And it's like this, this determination that I am the victim. And, and it, for me, this has taken so, some things very quickly. Some things, you know, immediately I could see that I, I just, I don't have to play that, that role of a victim anymore. And I have these tools to support, to support myself to do that. And the short moments was immediate. But with some things I'd been telling myself for so long, for so many years, that you really are a victim to this. This is true. This is real. This is who you are. It's taken some time. And, and this is the training. This is the training where these things that seem so true and real about who we are, that we haven't even, um, well, I hadn't even questioned them. I hadn't even acknowledged that they were things that I believed. They were so ingrained that the opportunity in the training, in the 12 empowerments, to look at them clearly and to begin to take responsibility for recognizing them <coughs> as also these rainbow-like appearances appearing within open intelligence. Data streaming within open intelligence. Like everything else. There couldn't be anything else, and I knew it intellectually, but the instinctive recognition is something different. <laughs> this is where we really become empowered and powerful where we really give up the right to be a victim. And I've struggled and I've kicked and I've tried to play the victim and it's been amazing to um, not have that confirmed. And you won't find that in this training or in this community. And it is different, but the effects and the benefits that you see in terms of the relating of people are immediate. And so when I don't take myself to be a victim of my own thoughts and emotions, and you know when you're speaking with people, it's just like all kinds of things going on. You know, like a conversation is just a brilliant example of the way the mind is just completely unpredictable. I just, I mean, it's, you know, I like you, you're interesting, you're boring, you're amazing, get me out of here. I'm hungry, I'm, you know, please stop talking, please tell me more. It's just, you know, it's just all over the place. But when I don't take myself to be a victim of these thoughts, when I can rest as open intelligence and allow them just to be as they are, then I can show up with that open intelligence in conversation and in relating and in communication. And when I don't take myself to be a victim of my thoughts and of my experience, then it becomes much easier not to take other people to be a victim of their thoughts and their experience either. When I see myself as an empowered human being, then I can see other people as empowered human beings, regardless of whether they see it for themselves. And that's, that's beautiful. That's the most beautiful way to live. And other people, they like that. 
No one wants to see themselves as a, as a victim. I don't want to. It's just a habit, a, a learned habit. So it's an incredible gift and it's for the benefit of all. When I relate with myself with openness and gentleness and clarity, then I automatically and spontaneously relate with other people with that same openness and gentleness and clarity. Like, you, you can't help it. So, when you look at the logo of Balance You, it's for the benefit of all. It includes us, but very quickly you'll see how that benefit that you're seeing for yourself and your way that you relate with yourself spreads out in the way that you relate with other people and your communications, conversations and relationships. And just a completely different way to live that actually you've always known was possible. Just nobody told you how.